Within six months, I was the zombie that anyone would be on 280 milligrams of OxyContin. But of course, I was still being told not to worry about addiction. Prescription painkillers, they now account for more overdose deaths in the U.S. than all illegal drugs combined. Sales of pills, including OxyContin, Vicodin, and Percocet, now total more than $9 billion a year. Until two decades ago, doctors reserved the use of so-called opioid drugs mainly for cancer patients because of fears over their addictiveness. That's when a handful of doctors, led by New York pain specialist Russell Portnoy, began spreading the message that people suffering from chronic pain should also get access to the drugs. There was a sense among those of us who wanted these drugs to be used more for patients with chronic pain that we had to destigmatize these drugs. We had to bring them from the cold into mainstream medical practice. We had to have doctors thinking in terms of risk and benefit instead of thinking in terms of these consequences that are so scary like addiction and, and death. Portner co-wrote this seminal paper in 1986. It argued that opioids could be used in a much larger group of people without cancer, including patients suffering from more common complaints such as back pain or nerve pain. In speeches around the country, Dr. Portnoy and others argued that fears of prescribing opioids were overblown. Their efforts were successful beyond what they could have imagined. Today, those drugs are among the most widely prescribed in America. Now Portnoy and many of his followers are having second thoughts. They say they overstated the benefits of the drugs and understated the risks. Do you think that some of your early advice represented misinformation? If you said, did I teach about pain management and specifically about opioid therapy in a way that reflects misinformation? Well, against the standards of 2012, I guess I did because we didn't know then what we know now. Um, so I guess I did. More than 16,500 people die in the U.S. from opioid overdoses each year. According to government studies, millions more are abusing or are addicted to the drugs. Next, what you should know about pain medicines. In the 1990s, Purdue Pharma, the maker of OxyContin, amplified the pro-opioid message with promotional videos like this one, featuring Portnoy and other doctors. The likelihood that the treatment of pain using an opioid drug, which is prescribed by a doctor, will lead to addiction is extremely low. In the videos and elsewhere, they said that less than 1% of patients became addicted and that overdoses were extremely rare. Purdue says the videos reflected expert opinion at the time. By the end of the 90s, pain doctors were prescribing powerful doses of the drugs to patients like Betts Tully, then a Chicago real estate agent who was suffering from severe back pain. OxyContin made me feel like a superwoman. But within weeks of starting OxyContin in 2001, her pain in return, she says, even worse than before. She says her doctor upped her dose. It wasn't out of the ordinary. That's what many pain specialists at the time believed was required. But the results for Tully were devastating. I thought I was dying. Eventually became so out of control. Tully says she lost her job and spent the next six years fighting to get off opioid pills. I ended up having to detox from that at 55. Today she hopes that by speaking out she can help fellow patients who want to change the way opioids are prescribed. Either it needs to be regulated or the medical community themselves has got to self-regulate. The point at which they come to me, the pain problem that they may have had that that started all of this is the least of their problems. Dr. Andrew Kolodny, a New York psychiatrist who specializes in pain med addiction, believes that patients taking high doses of opioids for months or years run a serious risk of getting hooked. Even if we correct the record and doctors start prescribing more cautiously, the millions of people who are addicted um, will, if they don't access opioids through their pain specialists, and if they don't access addiction treatment, they'll just turn to the black market for either heroin or, or pain pills. Purdue Pharma says the company has worked for more than a decade with doctors, police and the public to combat prescription drug abuse. It says that it's harmed, not helped, by the huge demand created by those who abuse its drugs. Painkillers are responsible for nearly half a million emergency room visits a year. But Dr. Portnoy says opioids are safe, if administered the right way, and relieve pain for many people who never become addicted. My patients are on very high doses, and I have patients who are uh, executives in companies, uh, hedge fund managers, hospital executives. The Centers for Disease Control has officially labeled it an epidemic. I know. Do, do you disagree with that? I do indeed. I think that some of the literature that has emerged is um, not balanced. They're saying if you follow certain rules, if you monitor them closely, patients will still do well, and that's not really true. 
What we're now dealing with in the United States is a movement of the pendulum back toward a level of concern and fear that is driving some policy decisions that, in my opinion, are very likely to harm the public health by reducing access to these essential drugs. Betts Tully believes reducing access is exactly what needs to happen. I've been watching this for 10 years and it's very, very frustrating to me to know that this many people have died, this many patients and have become addicted um, through no fault of their own because of, because of misinformation. It's, it's wrong and I don't understand how you can look the other way. Thomas Catan, The Wall Street Journal, Washington.